Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about whether or not you can make your car faster with gearing. And so what I've done with my S2000 is change the final drive ratio from 4.1, which was the stock final drive ratio for the rear differential, to 4.44. And so we're going to be determining, and I've actually done some acceleration tests to prove it with my actual car, whether or not this gear change can actually make your car faster without actually, you know, changing how much torque or horsepower your engine's making. So the engine's remaining untouched. All we're doing is changing the gearing. Can the car accelerate quicker? And so a general way to look at this before we get into the test results is looking at the top speed of each gear uh, versus the 4.11 or the 4.1 versus the 4.44 versus the 4.77, which is another option for the S2000 out there. There's a lot of options, uh, but these are three of the more common ratios, the 4.1, 4.44, and 4.77 uh, that you may see in the aftermarket. And so those are the ones we're comparing. And I ended up putting the 4.44 in my car. So looking at speed in miles per hour, you're, first we're looking at first gear. And what's the top speed we can hit in first gear with uh, that engine being at 9,000 RPM? So the stock car will go to about 45 miles per hour. These are all estimates, these miles per hour. Um, it's based on good math, but the thing is your tire diameter uh, can change. And as that tire diameter changes, if you have different wheels, etc., uh, you will change what these speeds are. So uh, a good estimate based on the stock tire size, 45 in first gear, uh, down to 41 once I've changed it to the 4.44. So the trade-off here is that we have more aggressive gearing, uh, so that should mean more wheel torque, but at a lower top speed. And so you can see, you know, it, it goes down as you get to the 477, 38 miles per hour in first gear, only up to 59 miles per hour in second gear, whereas the stock car can hit 68 miles per hour in second gear. Now, as far as determining, you know, which car will be quicker, if you pick a certain speed, a general rule of thumb, and there will of course always be exceptions, but a general rule of thumb is that the most aggressive gearing with the least number of shifts will give you the best zero to whatever time. So in this case, if we analyze 60 miles per hour, you can see that all of the three cars will have to shift into second gear. Now the 4.77 will have to actually shift into third to hit 60 miles per hour, whereas both of these won't. Now the 4.44 has more aggressive gearing, which means more wheel torque. And so ultimately, because this has the shortest gearing but only shifts once to get to 60 miles per hour, it will likely be the quickest from zero to 60. Now, if we were to do zero to 50, on the other hand, because the 4.77 has more aggressive gear ratio, it will be likely the one to reach that uh, 50 miles per hour the quickest. So the only reason it's not hitting 60 the quickest is because you have that additional shift. Now, analyzing speed based on hitting a target uh, mile per hour doesn't always make sense because of this discrepancy in when you change gears. So what you actually feel, what's fun to humans, is g-forces. So it's a better idea, uh, as far as analyzing how fun the car is, to look at g-forces. And so that's what we're doing in our test results. So for my test, what I did was, I took the car, put it in second gear, uh, below 10 miles per hour, and then floored it, and measured the time from 10 to 60 miles per hour, so a full RPM pull in second gear. Uh, now there was a minor difference in temperature outside for the 4.10, it was 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so a little bit cooler, a little bit more oxygen in the air, uh, versus 67 degrees Fahrenheit for the 4.44. There was also a thicker gear oil used in the 4.44, and of course the 4.44 was brand new, um, not too many miles on it yet, so you know it could still be breaking in, um, and as a result have a bit more of a parasitic loss on it. That said, uh, so the reason why I just did 10 to 60 in a single gear was to eliminate as many variables as possible that could alter this time. So you may think, okay, why didn't you just do a zero to 60? Well, you know, your launch can be different for each time and your gear shift can be different for each time. Uh, so I wanna eliminate that and just purely look at acceleration from 10 to 60 miles per hour in second gear with both final drive ratios. So we'll just go ahead and plug those numbers in. 
All right, now these data points are an average of three runs. So I did three acceleration runs with each car, took the average uh, for these different speed intervals from 10 to 60 miles per hour, from 30 to 40, from 40 to 50, and from 50 to 60. And then here are the averages of those time intervals, those three runs. And then here on the right, we have the percent difference. So you can see overall the run from 10 to 60 took 8.14 seconds. Uh, you know, not that quick obviously uh, keep in mind this is coming from a very low rpm it's also at 2700 feet elevation uh, so a little bit less oxygen at the air than sea level but regardless a lot of it comes from the fact that you're you know you take a lot of time in those lower rpms to speed up 4.44 is able to do the 10 to 60 in 7.81 seconds with a overall difference of 4.18 percent so the the new differential is 4.18 percent quicker over that you know effective entire uh, rpm range from 10 to 60 miles per hour now from 30 to 40 miles per hour it's 6.36 percent faster from 40 to 50 miles per hour, a significant difference, 7.51% faster than the other gear. And then from 50 to 60, it's actually a little bit slower. And so there's a couple reasons why you see this negative 1.12% here. First of all, you do have a torque drop off at the high end of the uh, S2000's torque curve. So uh, after you hit about 8,300 RPM and you go all the way to 9,000 RPM, that torque curve does start to drop. So this is more of an advantage when it's between uh, you know 50 to 60 in the 4.1 gear where it's at a lower RPM than the 4.44 where it's at a higher RPM. The other thing is I was running into the speed limiter, uh, the rev limiter at about 61 miles per hour. So right when I'm hitting 60, it's running into that rev limiter. And I think that may have played a role in slowing it down uh, because it was backing off the throttle once it got near that. And so I think that's the overall case of why this is a little bit slower. Overall, it is quicker. Uh, and then again, like I was mentioning, when you're analyzing acceleration, the thing that you feel is G-forces. And so if we look here, we can see that from 40 to 50 was, or from 50 to 60 was our quickest interval. So we went, we accelerated 10 miles per hour in 1.48. And then if we look here, we accelerated from 40 to 50, 10 miles per hour in 1.48. Four, one. So that was our quickest 10 mile per hour acceleration, 1.41. So that'll give us our peak average G. So the maximum average G-force with the 4.10 gear ratio was 0.307 Gs. The maximum average G-force with the 4.4 is 0.323 Gs. So not a huge difference, but it is a 5% boost in the maximum G-force. That's the force pressing you against the seat. Uh, that's what makes you smile. And so this is doing it 5% uh, greater than the 4.10. Now, what are the trade-offs of, you know, getting into this higher gear ratio for the final drive? Well, you are going to be limiting your top speed. So here we have the top speed in sixth gear. As you can see, the 444 at 159 miles per hour, the 41 at 173. And if you were to go with something more aggressive, like the 477, you're only hitting 148. Not that, you know, the car has enough power stock to hit that. Maybe it can get pretty close to that. Um, but, you know, 173, it's probably not going to be hitting with stock power. The revs at 80 miles per hour, so if you're cruising down the highway, you know, what are your revs going to be sitting at? Another important thing to kind of keep in mind, especially if this is your daily driver, the 4.10, 80 miles per hour, you're sitting under 4,200 RPM with the 444, what I've got right now, about 4,500 RPM, and then 4,850 if you were to go to the 477. So pretty high RPM to be cruising down the highway with. Uh, you know, honestly, had I known the exact percentage difference that would have occurred from this, and because this is not my daily driver, I probably would have gone with the 477 if I were to do it again, just to get a little bit more aggressive gearing out of it. I don't mind that it's gonna be floating up this high because I don't drive the car all that much on the highway, um, and it would have a bit more aggressive gearing, be a bit more fun. But 5% improvement is cool, and you know it, it's not gonna be screaming too high on the highway, and it does have a higher top speed down the line if I do you know, work on the power uh, and get it up there where it won't be limited like it would be if it was with the 477. Seven, seven. So thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below.